so this video is about Newton's first law. Uh, so Newton's laws uh, answer questions such as why a skydiver is floating in air, uh, what makes an apple falls from a tree, uh, and why a block connected to a spring oscillates when stretched and released. And we will find that such motions occur when objects interact with each other. So the apple is interacting with the earth, uh, and the skydiver is interacting with air, and the block is interacting with the spring. Uh, so the interaction between one object and another, or between the object and its environment, um, defines a quantity named force. So a force is a pull or a push in a certain direction that may cause the object to move or deform. Uh, but motion does not always occur if the force is not large enough to overcome other forces such as friction or gravity. Um, so let's suppose you have a block on a surface and then you apply a force on it by pushing it to the right. Um, if there is an equal and opposite force of friction to the left, then the object would remain at rest, right? Um, so until the applied force is larger than friction, then uh, the object would move. Uh, but whether or not an object moves due to a force, there is always some deformation, but usually um, in solving problems, it is valid to assume that objects remain undeformed under the influence of any force. Uh, so a force is a vector quantity, and the net external force acting on an object, uh, which is the vector sum of all forces acting on it, causes the object to accelerate, okay? and the direction of the acceleration is in the direction of that force. Um, and so acceleration is a measure of force, okay? Uh, so forces can be divided into contact forces, uh, which result from direct contact between two objects, such as kicking a ball or punching a bag, uh, and field forces, which can act through empty space and in which physical contact is not necessary, such as the magnetic force and the gravitational force, okay? Uh, but this distinction is just to make it easier to solve problems because contact forces are actually electromagnetic forces uh, because they involve electromagnetic uh, forces between the atoms of the surfaces that are in contact. Uh, so the fundamental forces are all field forces, um, because as we explained in the videos of relativity and quantum mechanics, everything is made up of energy, and we live in this energetic reality or energy field. Um, and field forces are just a manifestation of this underlying fact. Uh, and in the subatomic world, uh, the particles themselves are just energy waves, okay? So the fundamental forces in nature are the gravitational force between two objects, the electromagnetic force between two electric charges, um, the strong nuclear force between subatomic particles, which is responsible for the stability of the nuclei, and the weak nuclear force, uh, which produces certain kinds of radioactive decay and is responsible for the instability of some nuclei. Uh, so we will now discuss Newton's first law. So, between 1648 and 1727, uh, Isaac Newton formulated his uh, three famous laws of motion, uh, which describes the relationship between the force acting on an object and the acceleration of that object. Uh, so, Newtonian or classical mechanics, which is uh, based mainly on Newton's three laws of motion, uh, deals only with objects that are large compared to the size of the atom, which is approximately one angstrom, and uh, moving at speeds much less than the speed of light. Uh, so Einstein's special theory of relativity replaces Newtonian mechanics when an object's speed approaches the speed of light. Uh, and quantum mechanics replaces Newtonian mechanics when the object's dimensions are close to the atomic scale. Uh, so let's consider Newton's first law. Uh, so it was believed long ago that a force is necessary to keep an object moving and that any object's uh, natural state is to be at rest. Uh, but later these statements were proved to be incorrect. Uh, so to understand this, let's suppose that a block is resting on a surface and is given a push uh, to the right and then is released, okay? 
then as a result the plug would slide uh, for some time before it stops uh, and the time elapsed between pushing the block uh, until it comes to rest will increase as the surface gets smoother, right? And if the surface becomes uh, so smooth uh, that friction is almost negligible, then the block will continue to move along a straight line with a constant speed for a greater distance um, before it comes to rest, okay? And in situations where there is no friction at all, the block will continue to move along a straight line with a constant speed without requiring any force to keep it moving. Uh, but a force is required to initiate the motion, okay? Uh, so this concept was formulated by Newton and became his first law of motion. And it states that an object at rest remains at rest and an object in motion will continue in motion with constant velocity, so constant speed in a straight line, unless acted upon by a net external force. Uh, so if the net force is equal to zero, then the acceleration of the object is equal to zero. Uh, and this body's tendency to stay at rest or maintain uniform motion in a straight line is known as inertia, okay? And it defines specific kinds of reference frames known as inertial reference frames. So an inertial reference frame is a frame in which Newton's first law is valid. Uh, so it is a frame where an object has no acceleration if there is no net force acting on it. Uh, and any reference frame moving with a constant velocity relative to an inertial frame is also itself is an inertial frame of reference. Uh, and one aspect of inertial frames is that observers in different inertial frames will measure the same acceleration for a moving object. Uh, so, to prove this, let's consider the reference frames S and S dash mentioned in the kinematic video uh, 4 of relative velocity. So, S was a stationary observer and S dash is moving with a constant velocity relative to S, okay? Uh, and we showed that uh, how uh, the two observers will measure different velocities for the same object. Uh, and the relationship between the measured uh, velocities was given by the Galilean transformation equation, okay? Uh, so if we take the uh, equation and differentiate it with respect to time, uh, we get this equation. This is because f s dash s, which is the velocity of s dash relative to s, is constant in both magnitude and direction, and so the derivative is zero. And so we get this relation, okay? Uh, so the acceleration of a particle P measured from both the inertial frames S and S dash is the same. Uh, so let's now show an example of how Newton's first law is only valid when applied with respect to an inertial frame of reference, okay? Uh, so it's not valid to apply Newton's first law if the observer is in an accelerated frame of reference. Uh, so let's consider Jack, who is at rest relative to Earth, and who is observing Jill, who is driving a car at a constant velocity, okay? Uh, so Jill has her seat belt on, uh, and she put her suitcase in the seat next to her without restraining it. Uh, so now suppose that Jill steps on the brakes, uh, then this would cause her vehicle to decelerate, right? Uh, then her suitcase will start to move forward. Um, so according to Jill, who is in an accelerated frame of reference now because she is decelerating, the suitcase moved from rest even though there is no apparent net external force acting on it. Uh, so it appears to Jill that the suitcase started to move by itself. Uh, so... Uh, in Jill's frame, which is an accelerated frame of reference, uh, Newton's first law seems to be incorrect. But the situation is different for Jack, who is in an inertial frame of reference. Um, because in his perspective, the suitcase was initially moving with a constant velocity and the net force acting on it was zero. Uh, and when the car decelerates, the net force on the suitcase is still equal to zero, right? And so, to Jack, the suitcase must continue to move forward with a constant velocity and will stop only due to friction or impact with the inside of the car. 
Uh, so in Jack's frame, which is an inertial frame of reference, Newton's first law is valid, right? Because the suitcase was just continuing its straight line motion when the car was decelerating. Uh, so this is an example to show that Newton's first law and Newton's laws in general are not valid in all kinds of reference frames, but only valid when applied with respect to inertial frames, okay? So Jill must not apply Newton's first law in her accelerated frame of reference. Uh, and the same situation would be observed by Jill if she turns her car while moving, okay? Uh, so when the car turns, um, the suitcase will start to move in the direction opposite to the turn. Uh, so once again, uh, Jill observes that the suitcase moved from rest without any apparent force acting on it, which contradicts Newton's first law. Uh, but to Jack, uh, there is no contradiction with Newton's first law, because when the car turns, the suitcase tends to continue its uniform uh, initial straight line motion, and so it moves in the direction opposite to the turn. So from these two examples, you can see why Newton's laws are obeyed by objects when observed from inertial frames of reference, okay? Uh, and one convenient uh, inertial frame used uh, is the surface of the Earth. Uh, so the Earth can be considered as an inertial frame because its motion about its axis and about the Sun has a small effect on calculations and so it can be neglected. Uh, so let's consider now the principle of invariance. Uh, so some quantities such as uh, mass, force, time, and acceleration are invariant, which means they have the same numerical values when measured in different inertial frames, and other quantities such as velocity, kinetic energy, and work have different values in different inertial frames. Um, but the laws of physics have the same form in, in all inertial frames of reference, and this is known as the principle of invariance. Uh, so you may get, for example, a question like, uh, what net force is required to maintain an object moving at a constant velocity? And from Newton's uh, first law, uh, there is no required force. Uh, the net force is zero uh, because the uh, velocity is constant, okay? Uh, so thank you for watching, please don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next video.